Hey friends, welcome to the channel. If you want to improve your listening comprehension in your target language, but you only have text without audio, you'll find the right video. Los geht's! My name is Dustin. I'm an IT project manager from Germany. On this channel, we create content that helps us be more productive, to learn new things, especially languages, and to live a happier and more fulfilling life. In order to learn a foreign language, we need to consume massive amounts of input that is comprehensible, which means at the right level for you to be understood, and compelling, which means it has to be interesting for you in specific. You can do that via reading and or listening, but I would always advise to do both in order to develop a nice overall comprehension of the language. Listening to interesting texts helps you also to work on your pronunciation when you focus specifically on that. In order to produce the sound or rhythm of the language, you first need to be able to recognize it. The problem is often that we stumble upon texts that just don't have an audio version, like for example blog articles, Wikipedia entries, short stories and books, or even printed material from a textbook or so. That's why today I want to show you an awesome new app that you can use completely for free and that enables you to convert any text into spoken form. The app is called 11 Labs and uses AI for that matter. All right, let's dive into today's hour. First, a nice sip of coffee. Looks good. So the app is available for iOS and Android and can be downloaded in the respective app stores completely for free. You need to create an account but have neither to pay anything nor are there advertisements in the app. In future, there will be a premium tier that you can buy that offers extended functionalities, but the basic version will stay for free from what I've read on their page. The 11 Labs Reader app narrates articles, PDFs, EPUBs, newsletters, or you can also even make a photo of a printed text and it will transform it into a file and then generate the audio. When it comes to the available voices, you can choose between an incredible number of all kinds, specific to your target language, trending or popular, age, gender or use case. Then you can listen while reading along, which is super useful to connect the words to the written form or you can just listen while you're doing something else. And last but not least, when it comes to the available languages, there are over 30 from what I've counted within the app. Let's have a look now into the app together. Now let's have a look at the app together. So this is how it looks like once you've opened the app. Um, at the bottom you see four different uh, menu bars or menu points. One is the account, which includes the regular account settings and so on. Um, and then there are the voices. The voices are quite interesting because uh, it shows you everything that's available. Up here you can see right now iconic voices. There's for example James Dean. Let's listen into that. If a man can bridge the gap between life and death, if he can live after he's died, then maybe he was a great man. Very iconic, okay. Or Burt Reynolds or Judy Garland. And down here you can also explore the library. And the cool thing is that once you have found a voice that's especially interesting or that you that you like, then you can click onto it like let's listen to that. Se stai cercando una narrazione potente ma delicata, l'hai trovata. Usa il tuo testo e vedrai. Fidati di me. Hi, I'm Amelia, a super high quality English voice. Okay, then you can click on it and you can also add it to your voices. And once you have added, it, added them to your voices, you can use them to narrate something that you have uploaded. Um, I will show you that later. Let's say we take this one, then we click on add, and you can see that I have added for fun Burt Reynolds and also now Luca Brasi Gentile. So I forgot to show you the filter. You can sort by most popular, latest or trending, or you can also filter by uh, the different languages because sometimes they have an accent and are adjusted to a specific language. While I'm not sure, I don't think that they are limited to those languages, but they just work better for certain languages than for others. And you also have use cases, like if you want to have it for um, narrative or a story, if you want to narrate a book to make a nice audio book or so, or a short story, or if you want to narrate rather a conversation, and then you can um, choose the right one. Then you can also pick the gender and you can pick the age. Okay, so let's for example say you want to learn German. So we pick German here. And let's also say that you want to have a female voice 
and it's about an audiobook that you want to narrate. So let's pick, where is it? Narrative and story. Apply. And then you get different voices that could work. Let's listen into it. Es gibt keinen größeren Schaden als den der vergeudeten Zeit. Hmm, okay, or this one? Hallo, ich bin Ava. Ich bin eine hochwertige, authentische deutsche Stimme. But I also speak English and other languages. Oh, Hi, ich bin Leonie. Ich bin eine Herr. Setze dich bequem hin. Schließe die Augen. Okay, and there you can see the voices are very different from each other and that's actually it about the voices. Now let's have a look at the next category, which is Explore. And here you can see there are stories, only stories that don't have a copyright anymore. So classics, here you can see icons of the written word. There you see uh, the mysterious stranger and other stories, meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, Beyond Good and Evil by Nietzsche and so on. So real classics, also with a nice thumbnail, which has also been made by an AI, I guess. And or you see here, epics, epic quests await, or timeless love stories, Holmes greatest cases. But all of those are in English. If you want to learn English, this is a nice opportunity. It'd be really great if we would, we would have the same here for other languages like Spanish or so. But you could do the same anyway. You could import Don Quixote, for example, and just uh, in, in Spanish, for example, and uh, then just give it a nice narrator voice and then you can also listen to it more on that later. But here on top, you can also filter if you want to just have novels, if you want to have rather short stories, or if you uh, want to dive into different categories. And here is actually the import section or the reads section. It will also show you different stuff that you have picked up reading uh, in the explore section. But here you can basically import your own content. And as you can see here, I've already imported quite some things. And I wanna show you how you can do it too. So I've already copied a link from Wikipedia and you can just click on the plus here. And then it says, what do you wanna add? Or it gives you options of what do you wanna add? You could just write a text, so you can just copy a text over. You can import using an URL. You can upload a file like PDF, EPUB or whatever. Or you can also do a scan. So, write text, that's easy, I don't show you that. But you could import a URL. I've prepared something here. You can import the text, like, let's use that here. I paste it here, so that's the Wikipedia entry in Spanish. Okay, and that's it. And I've clicked on listen and now it's here. So here you can see the text. So it's all here, the whole Wikipedia article. And then I could also choose the voice. Right now, Bert Reynolds is selected. And let's listen to Bert Reynolds in Spanish. El laberinto del fauno. Es una película hispano-mexicana. As you can see, it works quite well. It's also walking through the text, and this way you could follow along and practice listen and practice listening actively, or you could just uh, listen to it on the go. So that's super cool. That's one way to import content. The next way is also to upload a file. I've already did that before, and as you can see here, for example, I uploaded Don Quixote. I will open it. That takes a little bit. Oops. So here you got the whole text. Yeah. And also uh, a table of content and then all the other stuff. And it's, it's all here. It's all here. And you can listen to it the same as we did for the Wikipedia article. And it also shows you the duration of the audiobook, which is 35 hours. What's important to notice here is that it doesn't render everything beforehand. It only loads um, like one or two minutes or so, or three minutes. And uh, every time you have listened to that, it renders the next two or three minutes. And this way it doesn't um, compute the whole audiobook at, the, at, at one time. This way also saves some resources. Another way, you could also scan content and that's super cool. And I prepared you something. So let's take this one, for example. That's a short um, yeah, short book, if you will, uh, about a 
in French about a topic and we will scan the back of it. So I will make a photo of that and it will transcribe that. So let's see. Oops. Okay, I will scan it now. Right, I'll do that here. Oops. Okay, I've made a photo and now I click on listen. Now it's detecting the text and that was super fast. You see the whole text, it has transcribed it and you can listen. Trax, nous, linguistes de France, de Belgique, de Suisse, du Canard, sommes proprement atterrés par l'ampleur de la diffusion d'idées fausses sur la langue française. And there you go, super cool, super easy. And whenever you need that or when you're probably studying a textbook or so with exercises and so on and you ask yourself, hmm, how would that be pronounced? How does that work? You can just create that by yourself. And that's super cool. I'm amazed by what is possible nowadays, that you can just transform whatever you find and listen to it. For language learning, this is super powerful because often it can be hard to find a matching audio to a reading. So what should I say? Just try it out and play around with it. Since it's completely free, you can't do much wrong. What would be cool is if you could also export the audio files and then import them back into Link, for example. You can do that on their website, but it's not free there. Or you have only a certain number of words that you can generate for free. This might be a functionality going forward that the paid version might include, since this requires compute resources and energy and so on. To me, it's anyway a wonder that there's even a free version. Sometimes it can also be slow or not load at all, but well, it's free, so I can't complain. And if you want to know how I approach reading a novel in a foreign language, have also a look at this video here. Thank you so much for watching and see you the next time.